Well, how do that chums design, Captain of the Station? I've got myself a cup of tea. Yes, a nice freshly brewed one at that. We're going to be talking about No Man's Sky, but let me just have a little sip of this. Ooh, lovely. Right, people. So, when we're talking about No Man's Sky, I'm talking about the February update, and is there actually going to be one? Yeah, this is probably a bit of de-escalation and anti-hype, just in case there isn't something coming alongside the PlayStation VR 2 update, because we know for sure it's coming out on PlayStation VR 2 on launch, and we get into that too. Let's jump on over, let's have a look at what we'd normally look at, because technically people inside of the view of us we look for three different signs with inside of the actual community. And one of the first places we look is on Sean Murray's Twitter. And what we look for is a singular emoji to sort of hint at what they may be when it comes to updates. Look, he loves his freaking emojis. There's a whole shed load here used in No Man's Sky Endurance, which is interesting. That's the pinned tweet from last year. Yeah, and um, yeah, you can see here, that's the pinned one, Endurance. Normally he pins the big yearly update, a big yearly update. So it was Endurance their big one for previous year? No, because he, he sort of said, no, this is just another update. Um, it's not the big one. And here you go. Let me let me just play you the start of this. This is what he said to or, um, IGN after Origins dropped. Now, just listen to the start of this. Yeah, this is our kind of big yearly update like we did next and beyond. This is it. Okay, so this is our big yearly update, like we did next and beyond. Okay, so he's already sort of registered that they do big yearly updates. So a lot of the community speculated that we we're going to get another big yearly update because it seems to be a pattern and trend last year. And now we knew Endurance wasn't it because he clearly said this is just another update. This is not the big update. So when we saw that Waypoint was coming out, we jumped on that and thought, well, this has to be the big one. Plus, it's 4.0, where the other big updates like Origins, Beyond, and Next has either been a 0.0, so, you know, 2.0, 3.0, that sort of thing. So we kind of thought Waypoint was going to be a big update because of what he said to IGN after Origins dropped. We got severely burnt by that one, didn't we, people? So anyway, let's um, let's scroll on down. So Endurance wasn't the big update of last year. So does that mean that the big update from last year has shifted and maybe is going to land a February of this year? But they, they tend to do the big updates in a summer. But all patterns have gone out the windows now, people, because of what happened during the Waypoint sort of update. And was it actually an update? It was a port to another console. Well, PlayStation VR 2 is a port to another sort of piece of hardware. I mean, it's a standalone sort of version in a roundabout way because you can't play PlayStation VR 4, uh, well, PlayStation VR of the original one, over on the PlayStation VR 2 hardware. It needs to be a new version. So I honestly don't know what's going to happen. Now, normally, Sean is quite regular with tweets inside of the verse on a lead up to an update and he has been i mean this was 14 hours ago and you can see here just on the 4th of feb he read well he retweeted this out just the other day which is actually my my, my background <laughs> it's just over there look it's there it's right behind me there <laughs> yes and thank you sean murray for retweeting out my sort of biome tank that i made out of a fish tank very kind of you sir much appreciated i've hit a like thank you thank you thank you and uh, yeah, scrolling down, there's lots of other images that he's tweeted out. This one's got a freighter in the sky and a crash one on top of a hill, which looks pretty darn cool, pretty epic. Nice photo. Um, yep. And he also retweeted out about PlayStation VR 2 arriving on February 22nd. This is pretty much all that's come out. But because he's put out this, he's retweeted the PlayStation UK, I honestly do think the only thing that's going to happen on the 22nd of February is we're going to get the PlayStation VR 2 version of No Man's Sky. I'm starting to think there might not be another expedition. There might not be a content update. I mean, when you jump on over, one of the other things that we look at is the Quicksilver store and how quickly things are unlocking and when there's going to be, you know, nothing left for us to unlock. So at the moment, we are... Well, 70 odd percent on unlocking just the next piece of coral at the moment. Strip coral, and we've got another sort of aquatic sort of rock to go. Now, these are taking far longer than what I expected, and I'm wondering whether the timers have been slowed. 
after that we've got another cape and this cape if, it, if the last cape's anything to go by it nearly took a whole month to unlock that freaking last cape well it took about three and a half weeks and well yeah close to a month but yeah it's a little bit mental so even if we do unlock those two rocks and maybe those the first rock took about um two weeks so if the next one takes two weeks that's what well, we're at 75 percent at the moment so maybe that one's going to a lock around valentine's day maybe around the 14th of february or something then the next one if that takes another two weeks that's going to take us up past the launch of playstation vr 2 so maybe they're going to put out the playstation vr 2 update then see if there's any bugs or anything that needs doing and then maybe further into the future i mean it could be it could be march time by the time that we actually unlock this tentacle cake now, the other thing that we look for, other than the Quicksilver store and also Sean Murray's Twitter page for emojis, is sales. So let's just jump back on over to the old Tinterwebs. Boom. So sale-wise, looking at PlayStation VR, you know, well, the PSN store, it's still full price. It's still $60. Now, normally they drop the price about a week or two before there's an update to get people on board. They sometimes pop out a trailer if it's going to be something big to sort of hint at what's coming, to sort of get people buying. That hasn't happened. That hasn't happened. Now, I don't want to sort of be completely negative around all of this and say, yeah, there's nothing coming. But let's just take this up a notch. Let's get a bit more positive. So here we go. This is from Eurogamer, and they're talking about how awesome PlayStation VR 2 actually is. So let's have a quick little listen to this. Actually, I, I think I'll keep it small screen. That way I've got probably less chance of being flagged for copying and all that sort of shenanigans. So here we go. Let's turn them up. Make sure that the actual quality is as high as it can go. Yes, it is. And let's hit play. I've never played No Man's Sky in VR on PC, so my only interactions with it have been on the very muddy looking, super blurry PS4 version and the slightly less muddy and blurry PS5 version, which was released a year or so afterwards. I'll be very surprised indeed if there is any muddiness or blur in the PSVR 2 version of No Man's Sky though, as the 4K HDR headset should keep even distant objects looking crisp and clear. If you've ever played No Man's Sky on the PSVR, you'll also be familiar with the rather awkward control schemes. Those move controllers are just nowhere near accurate enough to support such a complicated game, but the sense controllers on the other hand should make moving around in deep space and on the surface of an infinite number of planets so much more enjoyable and mostly friction free. Because to be honest with you, there is a lot going on in No Man's Sky, so it'll still be a complex game to get your head around even with those accurate non-drifting controllers. In essence though, No Man's Sky feels like the future of virtual reality. It's a game that simulates entire galaxies and lets you explore them to your heart's content. And you can do this solo or with friends too. But do make sure you take an extra oxygen cylinder with you before you go, because when you're wandering around on an alien world in VR, you get to climb up the crest of a mountain and stare off into the distance of the world beyond. Well, my friends, those views will literally take your breath away. Well, there you go, people. So it, I kind of agree. Hopefully it's going to be a nice and sharp, and nice and crystal clear. I did watch um, Good at Game, Damash Smash, actually playing on a PC. And it was freaking great on that. So I'm hoping that it's at least on par with what we've seen with the, you know, the PC Quest type things, you know. Anyway, so it's definitely coming out as a free update, and it's coming out on launch day, which is February 22nd, people inside of the view of us. So there you go, February 22nd. We know for sure that we're getting No Man's Sky PSVR 2 update, which is free to existing owners of the game. Now, normally, like I say, there would be sales to sort of get people on board with picking up No Man's Sky, but normally they would put some sort of content update alongside an update, whether that's just an expedition, just to get people sort of hyped about something coming inside of the verse to sort of get people hopping onto that bandwagon. But I can't see any signs of that happening, so I really don't know what's going on there. 
Something that is quite interesting though is over on Hello Games' LinkedIn page, they've actually put out this. Now this was only a month ago. If you're looking for a fresh start in 2023, and if you want to make a difference in a tight-knit, high-performing group, we could be just what you're looking for. We have just added two specific positions to our jobs page, designer and build engineer. But we're always on the lookout for talented people to join our small team. So if you feel that you have something to offer, don't be shy and get in touch. Let's click this link. I'm fairly sure this link used to take you over to the Hello Games page for joiners and they advertise all the other the actual vacancies. Build Engineer and Designer are still both there. Whether their closing date has passed, I really don't know. Whether they've actually employed somebody, I also don't know. I mean, this was what a month ago that they posted on LinkedIn. So maybe it's still open and opportunities are there for those that could apply. Experienced programmer, graduate junior programmer, graphics engine programmer, six months contract. Kind of interesting, that one. Yeah, six months. Does that mean that they're trying to push something out within the next six months? However, that's been there for a little while. One that has disappeared now is they did have a Chinese speaking programmer that they wanted to get hold of. Hmm, I guess they may have filled that role then. So some of them have disappeared from here. Heck yes. But there we are. There's a lot of information on here about who they are, where their offices are, etc, etc. I'm going to just click this one for a second. Let's have a quick clickety click of this one. Quick look at that. Let's also have a look at Build Engineer, Why the Fudge Not and Designer. Let's see where this goes exactly. The Graphics Engine Programmer. Cool. Now, I was just wondering whether it might hint at what you might be taking on, but because it's got No Man's Sky at the top, I'm going to assume that it's No Man's Sky. But we all know that they're working on a separate project. You know, they've got a big, ambitious title, as ambitious as No Man's Sky, but it's not No Man's Sky 2. But considering they've crafted like a procedural engine that can create whole universes, I'd like to hope that it's in a similar sort of vein, but we can only but hope. And that's a complete speculation. So Build Engineer as well, let's have a quick look see on that. It doesn't actually say why it's only a six month contract though, does it? Hmm, interesting. Anyway, Build Engineer, there we are. Plugins, CI builds, detailed knowledge of source control, merging branches, blah de blah de blah. Pretty darn sweet. I'm not seeing anything that's jumping out here to say, yeah, you definitely... I mean, it's all in C++, but so many sort of engines use C++, but we know that Hello Games has created their own engine. So, you know, I you can't see that they've actually specifically asked for somebody that's familiar with, like, Unreal Engine 5 or anything like that. So I imagine it's just using their own in-house engine yet again. So, yeah, it it is what it is, people. There's not much you can read into either of, well, any of these jobs that have been put out there. But there we go. There we are. That's everything that I've got for you. It's not much to go on. It's kind of a little bit of anti-hype in a roundabout way. I'm just saying don't get too excited because of what happened with Waypoint and the fact that we can't trust patterns anymore. And we really have no sort of community sort of feedback to questions or anything that we ask at the moment. It's like um, all the different sorts of issues that have been hitting up multiplayer. I have been trying to contact people at Hello Games to ask what's going on with that, whether it's a feature or whether it's now by design and whether they're going to be fixing the multiplayer issues that we're experiencing and have been experiencing. Even prior to Waypoint, there was a lot of disconnection issues, discovery server issues and all sorts of other stuff. I assumed that it might have been because they were working on trying to get multiplayer to work for Nintendo Switch. And I still kind of assume that. Another one of my theories is, though, is perhaps now that they've merged all the different universes together, because it doesn't matter where your build is. Normally, it, before, it mattered where your build was. If you built in survival mode or you built in creative mode, you had to have a save in creative mode or survival mode to go and see those retrospective bases. Now, not the case. You can now go visit bases in any iteration. So it's almost like they've merged everybody onto one server. Now, if they have put everybody onto one server, it could be why we're experiencing some server issues because of load and all that sort of stuff and server instances. Hopefully it's not some sort of virtual server farm environment that we're on. It's trying to load balances off. And that's why we're sometimes we're in a group with our friends and then all of a sudden you can't see one of your friends. Maybe they've been tripped over into another instance. Now, why would they do that? Well, maybe if they haven't got too many servers at Hello Games, 
Maybe they've moved everybody onto one server farm so they can free up another server for whatever their new game is. Maybe it's all hands on deck for the new sort of ambitious title they're working on now, and maybe No Man's Sky they're going to try and deliver it onto PSVR 2, and maybe next time they might try and get it, well, we already know that they're getting it on Apple iOS, so maybe they're working on some sort of Android development would be my next guess. Or some sort of streaming cloud version for you know the Google services or whatever other streaming services are coming out. But yeah, that, that that could be what they're planning for No Man's Sky now, and maybe then putting it over into some sort of content creators club, a little bit like Skyrim and what Bethesda did, where you know the modding community takes over and the PC players keep the, the life of the game going that little bit longer while their new title comes out. I'm I'm hoping though. That we can read a little bit more into Sean's tweet that he did a little while ago where he said this year is going to be a big year for No Man's Sky in the way of trying to get it to the top of the charts of Steam again. But, you know there's different ways of interpreting that. It could just be that he wants to have a very good year like previous years and there's nothing to it other than they just want it to be a big year rather than it's going to be a big year for updates. It depends on how you look at that actual tweet, because you can interpret it either way. So yeah, I want to remain hopeful that they're hoping that it's going to be a big one. Let me just show you what he put so you can see what the fudge I'm on about, shall I? Shall I? Yeah, let's do that. Here we go, let's jump on over. There we go. It says here, thank you for making No Man's Sky one of the most played and best-selling games on Steam again in 2022. Let us make 2023 a big one. So I don't know whether that means that we're going to get a big update. I mean, we didn't in 2022, and yet it still climbed the ladder. So there's different ways, like I say, to interpret this tweet. I'm hoping we're going to have a big year for them, and I really do hope to see them cl climb that Steam chart. But if you are to look at Steam numbers for No Man's Sky right now, which is another thing, No Man's Sky player count. Boom, jumping over, Steam charts. Let's have a look how we've got the January figures in right now. And January is down to 11,366. Let's have a look what it was in January of 2022. It was actually lower. It was 10,741. So if you compare January 2022 with January 2023, it's actually doing better right now. <laughs> So there is that, people. Um, so it's still doing okay when it comes to comparing it to yearly figures. But you can see that there was a slight uplift in February of 2022. Why was that, you may wonder? It's because we got a small update in 2022, in the February of 2022. So we kind of hope that there... Well, we know it's coming to PlayStation VR 2, but that's not going to do anything to Steam chart numbers, is it? Because it's over on PSN. But hopefully there might be. There might be. Fingers crossed. Now, I don't want to sort of raise any sort of expectations or for people to go, oh, Captain Steve said we're definitely getting X, Y, Z. Don't know, mate. I really don't. But considering that we had all the redux of the expeditions and people got into the expedition sort of vibe and running them was great fun over the Christmas period, I would like to hope at the very least some sort of expedition drops alongside the PlayStation VR 2 update. Um, that's that's my biggest hope at the moment. We might just get an expedition. Um, well, that's my common sense thinking at the very least update. I really would like to say that we're going to get some sort of content update like we have in February's of previous years because it wasn't just last year. The year before that, we got another update. I think Companions dropped the previous year. And before that, we had another update. February updates have been a regular occurrence in the past, people. So I think we had Sentinel in 2022. And in 2021, I think we had the Companions update. Yeah, but... Just just have a look for yourselves. Look it up, people, it's because they were quite meaningful, fairly decent updates that we've had over the last couple of years in February. And I hope, hope that we get something similar again, going by patterns, but then Waypoint broke all of that, didn't it? So who knows, peeps? Anyways, for sure, we know that we're getting PlayStation VR 2, and I know there's a lot of people excited for that. And I hope to be picking up PlayStation VR 2 once I return from the Philippines at the end of April. Um, but we shall see. We shall see how things go. Anyway, until next time, people, you guys have been awesome. I've been Captain Steve, drinking my tea rather gingerly. We've still got half a cup left. <laughs> I'll have a little bit more now.
Oh, that was a big mouthful. Anyway, people, have a good one. Take care. Goodbye, goodbye. And goodbye again.